All right, our final presentation this afternoon will be from North Dakota State University. Aiden, nice to meet you. Aiden, good evening. Hi, I'm Aiden, nice to meet you. Good evening. Aiden, nice to meet you. Good afternoon. We'd like to thank you, the Board of Directors at Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative, for considering our proposal. Happiness is waking up on a Saturday with the sun shining. It comes in many forms. It could be taking your family for a day at the zoo, having an afternoon barbecue, but today is for softball. You bring your friends and family to the field where they sit in the bleachers as you head to the dugout with your team. And there, they're handing out water and snacks one person even brought an entire bag of Uncle Jack's pumpkin seeds. You grab a handful and wait for it to be your turn. And when they call your name, you pop the last couple seeds in your mouth, crack a smile, and head up to the plate. Here comes the pitch. Founded in 1987, Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative has been excelling in the pumpkin pie industry for 30 years, growing in both North Dakota and Minnesota they produce an all-American pumpkin pie. But with a new proprietary variety of pumpkin, they are ready to expand into the pumpkin seed market. Their target demographic, or people ages 45 to 65, henceforth called Boomer X, because they are part of the baby boomer generation, as well as gen the top part of Generation X, will not only reach for this snack because it is hollis, has a more savory and nuttier taste, but also because it is full of vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids that will actually give them a mood boost. But now, who is this Uncle Jack? Well, here he is, standing in front of his truck, wearing his favorite plaid shirt, with both his nephew and his nephew's son. You could call them the future generations of perfect pumpkin. Jack's been around this industry a long time. He took over his farm from his dad in 1985, and only two years later, joined with growers in the region to create this cooperative. Every harvest, Jack would take some of these hullless seeds, also known as a pepita, he'd roast them. And for the past 10 years, he's been bringing them to the quarterly meetings where they very quickly became a highlight. Now, we're taking those seeds and going to introduce them into a market. So let's take a look at the market, which we will introduce Uncle Jack's pumpkin seeds into. Consumerism defines markets. And one of the growing consumer products is actually happiness. Professionals in this industry say it's valued at over $10 billion a year. That's insane, all of that just for happiness? Where is it? It's in TV shows, movies, songs. I mean, Happy Days, Happy Gilmore. There's even a song just called Happy by Pharrell. It's in ad slogans too. IHOP, come hungry, leave happy. These people are selling the emotion, the feeling of happiness. So. The best way to increase this happiness that consumers want is not through any grand gestures, but instead through life's little pleasures. So what are some of these little pleasures? For the Boomer X generation, snacking is just that. They find themselves snacking 20% more frequently than millennials. The nut and seed industry has been growing over the last few years. And looking forward, we're expected to see the nut industry grow 1.7% and the seed industry grow 10% each year for the next five years. The Boomer X generation retains 70% of the United States disposable income. Along with this, they rate themselves at a 6.2 out of 10 on the scale of happiness. This is lower than both the generations before and after them. Taking a look at the market size and potential, we can see that the Boomer X generation has over $7 trillion in annual purchasing power. The nut and seed industry has been grossing over $1.9 billion in sales annually. Looking forward, we're expected to see that number grow to over $2.1 billion. The Northeast is a great place for us to start. It's a boomer-dense area. 
there's almost 1.8 million households containing at least one Boomer X and earning an average household income of over $90,000. We're excited to launch our product there. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at who these people really are. Boomer X individuals are facing a longer life expectancy than any previous generation. It's why they're trying to stay active, try new sports, maybe play softball, to increase their vitality for the coming years. These are people who have been around long enough to know the importance of relationships. It's why they're active members in their community, the type of people you might see volunteering at a local shelter or stop and say hey to when you're at the local grocery store. They also see their close personal relationships as important to them, their friends, their family, their neighbors. Boomerx have seen a lot of change over the years. Phones going from a rotary to a touch screen and cell phones from the size of a brick to barely a millimeter thick. So it's no surprise that they see changes in their diet as one of the greatest ways to increase their overall wellness. To confirm the research we were seeing online, we conducted our own primary research through intercept interviews in Northeast Malls. We found some great things. For example, 93% of Boomer X individuals saw living a healthy lifestyle as important to them. But the single most important thing we found was that 73% of these people in our target demographic were willing to try pumpkin seeds as a new snack. So let's take a look at some of our product strengths as well as addressable weaknesses. First is the real functional health benefits that pumpkin seeds give you. They are also nut and seed allergen alternatives which, along with being diabetic friendly, makes them accessible and edible to almost all of the United States population. As for weaknesses, pumpkins are seasonally harvested. We also face a lack of brand awareness, which is why it is so important for us to introduce Uncle Jack to our consumers. Now let's take a look at some external opportunities and threats. There is a growing demand for superfoods. Superfood is just really the only appropriate word to describe what the pumpkin seed is. Next is the growing share of the disposable income by our target market. As with any agricultural product, there is always the threat of natural disaster. And uniquely, we actually face a lack of product awareness. It's why education is so vital to our marketing strategy. Explaining to consumers the healthy benefits of these hullless seeds. Next, there is a saturation within the nut market. This is why we have to carve out our own niche in the seed industry. Let's take a look at some of our competitors. As you can see here on our pumpkin pie chart, by year three, we will have taken a 5% slice of the Northeast region's nut and seed market. So how does Uncle Jack's compare to the top selling pumpkin seed brands currently on the market, including David, Nature's Harvest, Spitz, and Good Sense, as well as sunflower seeds in general. We are competitively priced at 87 cents an ounce. We also have the second lowest fat and caloric content for our original roasted flavor. Most importantly, we are the only major pumpkin seed producer that is grown exclusively in the United States. If we take a look at our Uncle Jack sea salt flavor, we will see that we are within the top three for both omega-6 and manganese content. We also have the highest levels of magnesium, zinc, and iron. These essential micronutrients are key to carrying oxygen in the blood, building proteins, as well as they aid in cell growth. We recognize that there are two segments to our market. We are going to take share away from the seed market by highlighting our unique, nutty, savory flavor and absolutely outshine the nut market with our functional health benefits. How are we going to run our business? Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative is excited to unveil our newest product, Uncle Jack's Pumpkin Seeds. Our new hybrid pumpkin seed was crossbred with sugar pumpkins that still allow farmers to produce the classic pumpkin pie filling and the khaki pumpkin, which bears the hullless seeds now used in our snack. Uncle Jack's will offer three flavors, sea salt, barbecue, and original roasted. We will also have one rotating seasonal flavor. Boomer X will love a handful of happy due to its ability to be an everyday snack 
and, an, and a garnish on, for instance, the salad. Uncle Jack's is squash full of essential amino acids, such as L-tryptophan, which creates serotonin that actually gives the brain a little mood boost, isoleucine, which is the key component to muscle recovery after exercise, arginine, which lowers blood pressure, valine, proline, and a bunch of other tongue-twisting amino acids that are just as important. In addition, Uncle Jack's will also improve heart, liver, and prostate health, and will actually lower your cholesterol. The strategy for the Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative is to capitalize on the unique, functional, food health benefits of the proprietary pumpkin seed to enhance the everyday lifestyle and wellness of Boomer X. The goal of our business is to bring happiness to consumers and value to farmers through the repurposing of a previously underutilized byproduct into a branded product. Object we will have four objectives to accomplish by year three. First, we will sell 161,000 pounds of pumpkin seeds. Second, we will earn 18.6% profit margin. Third, we will capture 5% of the New England nut and seed market. And finally, we will donate $20,000 to charity by year three. Now, let's take a look at how Uncle Jack's will be viewed by retailers and consumers. Uncle Jack's is being positioned as the superfood that makes you happy. The multiple vitamins and minerals within Uncle Jack's provide those functional health benefits that the Boomer Xers are truly looking to get from their diets. Our product is going to be packaged in two ways. The first, a large one pound resealable bag option, and the next, the snack pack option, where there will be 10 1.6 ounce individual bags. These both wholesale for $8.58 and have a retail price of $13.99. The individual snack bag also retails for a suggested price of $1.89. We will be in 143 stores in year one when we are in the chains, including Zebra, Fresh Market, Fairway, and more. By year two, we will add on 212 more stores when we are in Seatown, Shaw's, and Market Basket. Finally, by year three, we will be in Acme, Vons, Stop and Shop, and more for a grand total of 544 grocery stores. So how are we going to get this happiness into the hands of our consumers? Generating demand is the number one priority for our promotions team. We plan to do this through education. We're going to send a representative from our company out into the stores where our seeds are being sold. There they will meet one-on-one -on -one with consumers, give them a chance to sample our product, as well as enter into a conversation about the nutritious, flavorful, and naturally happy aspects of our product. Our representatives will plant a seed with consumers so the next time they're at the store, they're craving a handful of happy. Our website will be easy to use and highly functional. It'll offer things such as an email sign-up e-commerce purchasing, as well as a store locator. We will use digital and social media to reach our consumers online. We will use things such as Google AdWords, Facebook, and other social media platforms. Through our research, we found that the majority of leisure online time spent within the Boomer X generation is on Facebook. So we as a company plan to do the same. We will have Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, each of these having their own original content and links back to our Facebook page. Our most unique and exciting way for us to reach our target market is through airing ads on memorable entertainment television, or MeTV. This classic TV channel features shows such as I Love Lucy and Gilligan's Island. Our, our ads will run for 45 days. They'll run three times one hour during a primetime hour of television. This will give us the opportunity to build up a consistent audience. For our more local customers, we will be directly mailing within, within our demographic and a three mile radius of a store. They will receive coupons and other information about Uncle Jack's. Our coupons will be found through direct mail, email, and in-store promotions. Our public relations team will build press releases and articles. These will be published on our Facebook page, on our website, as well as sent to lo local print media. This will unveil our seasonal flavor every quarter. Let's take a little closer look at how we plan to push our product onto the market. 
Uncle Jack's will get onto these stores shelves by utilizing our pre-existing distribution network that is already in place for our pie filling company. Our business representatives are not only educating our consumers, but also our store's managers. These individuals are going to go to these stores and provide them with the point of purchase materials, which include the displays, banners, and other signs that are really going to help build Uncle Jack's brand awareness. Finally, we are going to be attending the National Grocers Trade Show, where we will create relationships with both individual wholesalers as well as retailers so that we can continue to expand even past year three. Boomer X and our producers love to give back to their community, which is why we are going to partner with foundations such as the Anxiety and Depression Association of America to not only help them raise donations, but also spread awareness, education, and support their research. Now you might not know this, but the flavor of our seeds and my passion for finance have something in common. We're both nutty. Now, our sales figures we derived using that primary research that we conducted in the Northeast. And in that research, we learned that grocery stores sell, on average, 92 pounds of nuts and seeds each week. Through our targeted marketing campaign, Uncle Jack's aims to account for 5% of this, or as you can see, 4.6 pounds sold in each store every week. In our first year, across 143 stores, this will lead to sales of 30,000 units. And as we ramp up and expand into all 544 stores, this will generate a gross revenue of $1.6 million. 20% of that will generate online. Now, our customers are craving profits. And they will achieve this by receiving this 85 cent premium we will give to them. And this is in addition to an already existing 17 cent premium in place for the rest of the pumpkin. Other variable expenses include processing, which will cost $2.34 to dry, season, and finally package our seeds. We also have a 50 cent distri distribution charge. This will bring the total per unit cost of production to $3.69. As we mentioned earlier, a main facet of our marketing campaign is customer education. And where this reflects itself upon the marketing budget is under sampling and slotting fees. These two line items will increase incrementally each year as we get the product into the hands of more consumers and onto more store shelves. You'll notice one of our largest expenses in the first year falls under website and development. And this is crucial because as I mentioned, we're conducting 20% of our business online and we need to create an e-commerce site to do that. Our total marketing budget in the third year comes to $300,000, or 19% of our gross sales. Now for the bottom line. The biggest challenge our cooperative faces currently is a seasonal demand for our only product. This is a difficult situation, but this new expansion will improve our financial situation by providing year-round cash flow. As you can see by year three, we'll be operating at an 18.6% profit margin, and this in turn will generate over $200,000 worth of annual net income. So you've seen our financial goals, but it will be key to keep an eye on these every step of the way. Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative will monitor and measure our progress towards our objectives. We will do this through analysis of our financial statements as well as weekly summaries of our, Google, of our digital metrics. First, I would like to highlight the $161,000 in sales. We will measure this by analyzing flavor and retail performance. If we feel like we are not on track to accomplish this, we will consider lowering price, changing flavor options, and also searching for alternative grocery chains. If we exceed this expectation, we will expand our distribution. Next, I'd like to highlight our donation of $20,000. If we feel like we are not on task to accomplish this, we will increase our donation awareness, and if we exceed this expectation, we will search for additional charities. In the digital age, information travels fast. This is why it is imperative that a corporation has a plan in place to respond to a crisis as it relates to their brand image, to stop any of these crises from being blown out of proportion. Just look at what's recently happened with United. Perfect Pumpkin Cooperative 
has a team of strategic communication specialists to alleviate this risk. These people can respond to these situations and stop them from snowballing out of proportion. If Uncle Jack's faces an extreme financial crisis, we have an easy exit strategy. We simply cancel our contract with our custom processing plant and return to our previous market. The ball is coming fast and over, straight over the plate, and your bat cracks when you swing, and there it goes, straight over the fence for a home run. The crowd's going wild, your team is cheering as you round the bases, and then you come home, back to Uncle Jack's and another handful of happy. Who would like to ask the first question? Well, you teed it up so nicely there. Yes. Wow. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about your decision to not necessarily go after doctors or nutritionists as part of your target audience. You have a product that has a lot of health benefits. Um, and everything you've talked about from a communication standpoint is very focused in on the consumer themselves. Sure, we really want to highlight on ourselves as a snack food, something that is accessible to everybody. We expect a spillover effect to the health professionals who will see these real functional health benefits, but we really want to hone in on the Boomer X market because, as we said before, the 20% more snacking than millennials and the 70% of disposable income. When you talk a little bit about the Boomer X generation, um, we all fit into that, so we're in the market. <laughs> yeah. But don't we? Yeah, no, yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have some great reasons for reaching that audience, and you also have some great say that they're big snackers. Do you have anything that shows that they're big snackers of nuts and seed products? Well, our primary research, we found that they were willing to try pumpkin seeds 73% of the time. This is vital for getting our food into stores because that's one of the things that they look at. If there's a demand, then they'll be willing, or people are willing to try the product. It's something they'll be willing to put on their shelves. So we think that this number represents very well that the Boomer X generation is willing to try specifically our product. So I, I appreciate how you put together your primary research and the background you've done around that. Um, one of the questions I have, though, is I notice we're saying a lot, um, eat these to be happy and be happy and be happy, um, which is great. But sometimes we get into trouble with um, false advertising claims and claims that we can't actually hold up based on what our evidence shows from a scientific angle. Can you help me with your thought process around that? What we hope to do is, first of all, they have L-tryptophan, which actually releases serotonin in the brain, which causes that mood boost. So chemically, it is accurate. It's very important for us, though, to note that we would never encourage someone, as this does not function as an antidepressant, to switch from whatever kind of medication they need to be taking if it is doctor recommended for them. You made the point that by year three, your marketing budget would be 19% of gross sales. How does that compare with other companies, the size or within the category? We talked to marketing professionals in our region and they informed us that this was on the upper end of the range for that ratio for a startup expansion. And we feel confident in it, even though it's on the upper end. Who do you think you're likely to replace? You know, is it going to be the, the trail mix? Is it going to be people who are, they, they, as you said, they snack all the time, right? So who do you think you're going to be likely to replace? I believe um, shares, we are going to take share away from the seed market more so, especially the sunflower seed market, because our product is very easy to consume. It's wholeless, so you don't have to spit out the shell. And that's something that's really important to consumers, and it's just easier to consume in that way. On your charity donation, what was the thought process behind picking the charity that you did um, versus maybe making it something that your customers could vote for on the website or something that was more regional since you are specifically just going to one area that something that's a little more relevant to them than the Anxiety and Depression Association of America? I, is it okay if I address that in two parts? Sure. 
So the first part um, that's very important for me to point out, especially, is that our 20,000 donation will go to multiple charities. We plan on having an application process so that we make sure that their values and morals align with what we want ours and that the money will go to, to, towards something that we fully support. Okay. Um, the second part, can you, sorry, I forgot. Um, the second part on approaching multiple charities, of course, and talking to them, it will just be getting feedback from our consumers on what they want to see and making sure that we're trying to help everyone have a he happy, healthy lifestyle. And I'd also like to note that the Anxiety and Depression Association of America is headquartered in Baltimore, Maryland, and that was considered in our, in our first choice there. A little more on the uh, charitable donation. Um, you mentioned it, and obviously you want to be altruistic, but I don't see how that's really tied back to any of your other marketing plans, campaigns. It honestly feels like a sort of an afterthought that you were checking a box to be charitable. Uh, can you help me to understand why you chose to put a charity donation in there as a cooperative to begin with? Uh, Boomer Xers, they as we highlighted previously, they're really those people that give back to their communities. You know, they, I know my grandma goes to the local food pantry a lot, and there's many of those individuals that do so within our target market. So what this is is really us being aligned with our target market and showing that we do also give back to the community and we support their decisions to do so as well. So kind of while we're on the charity um, kind of comment, which we're all for um, donating, but we're only making 18.6% profit, and $20,000 is a pretty big chunk of um, helping us to overcome that. Um, so can you tell us, one, why are we still donating whenever our profit, and we are making money, which is great, but 186 is not usually great investment ROI. And then also, if you can, how does that compare to the actual pumpkin pie filling as far as profit goes? I don't know if you can do that or not, which is okay. Yeah, so our pumpkin pie filling business generates roughly $3 million worth of annual revenue. So until this Uncle Jack's Pass Through 3 becomes a national product, it's not going to rival the income we receive from it. And the concern about the donation, our farmers also find themselves being in this Boomer X generation, the average age of farmers is right in that slot. So as long as they're making money, they're making money through their dividends if we're profitable, as long as they're making money through their dividends, they're happy to give back to their community. You had a pretty comprehensive go-to retail strategy, and then you also said that you wanted 20% online sales. So do we know that our target audience buys products like this online, and maybe more importantly, doesn't that fly in the face of your retail approach? Won't retailers be upset if you're taking business away? Through the research that we've found, the Boomer X generation only shops online about 20% of the time, so that's how we arrived at that number. They prefer to be out in their community um, and at the local grocery store. That's uh, the reason that we've positioned ourselves that way. Well, speaking about grocery stores, you're distributing right now uh, your pumpkin pie filling through supermarkets, and you, you said you're going to be able to utilize that chain. Um, do you know, I mean, do the stores, are, is the snack food manager the same as the pumpkin pie filling manager, number one? And then number two, um, do you have research that's showing that, you know, the seed market is sold in grocery stores or is it also sold in, you know, sea stores and places where your products currently aren't distributed? Yeah. So we decided, uh, yes, the managers do align in the same area. So that was easy for us. Okay. Um, and then we chose to do supermarkets just because we had that pre-existing distribution network and so that we saw that as the easiest route to put our seeds into those grocery stores. We, our pumpkin pie filling obviously isn't any, in any of the convenience stores. And so we saw that as more of a hurdle than going with the relationships that we previously had. Do you foresee the need to increase production of pumpkins. 160,000 pounds of pumpkins is an awful lot of pumpkin seed. So do you have to grow more? Do you have the capacity in the co-op to actually do that and fulfill that? So we have an excess of pumpkin seeds currently. The first year will only require the use of pumpkin seeds from six of our 40 growers. And into year three, it will require the use of seeds from 22 of our 40 growers. So we may need to ramp up production if we wanted to go nationwide, but into year three, we're only at about half capacity. Cool. 
The second note in your SWOT analysis under strength said that this has something to do with memory. I would think that would be pretty important to Boomer X audience, but you didn't really leverage that. Yeah, one of the essential tongue-twisting amino acids that we complain is actually tyrosine, which does a great job of creating the proteins that attribute to alertness in the brain. So this helps with short-term memory so that the Boomer X individuals can get that. And we know we have a lot of essential amino acids, and we'll highlight on these through the articles that are shared on our website and Facebook page. I'm a little confused with all of these great wellness benefits that are, that are documented that you have there. Why did you choose to go with the untangible happy? Well, we think it is tangible just because science has proven that the L-tryptophan can create that mood boost. It, so, and part of the happiness is the pleasure of eating our snack that is so delicious. And so we think that the two combined will create a pleasurable experience and ultimately that little pleasure will create a little bit more happiness in their day.